Pretty awesome. I'm here with the Wooded Beardsman at his small cabin build. You know, wave to the crowd. He's, he's busy working up there. Uh, I'm really excited to be here, so I made the trip down south for once. And we are into, well, anything could happen. We might be catching and cooking. Um, it's my big wild year, so 365 days of eating only wild food. So I'm only eating wild food, only cooking wild food. Um, we might target nuisance animals. We might do some uh, nuisance trapping. We might do some crow hunting. I have a channel sponsor to announce. We're doing product reviews. Um, so stay tuned, follow along. It's gonna be a really busy video. Milled on site. Built on site. This is a fabulous little cabin. It's got the live edge siding. A last forever steel roof. Great little view into the bush. We're gonna, here's some of our pile of gear. We're gonna fire up this stove and get settled in. So we brought in a cooked goose. We're gonna get this warmed up on the cook stove. That's probably gonna be our first meal. You harvested that goose with Mark. I did. So people can check out that video on your channel. Yeah. Great little goose hunt. Your first official goose hunt? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, we did, we, we hunted geese before. Yeah, but this is your first time over decoys with calls. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, first real goose hunt. That's super exciting. We opportunistically hunted geese. Yeah. We shot one, on, I shot one on the bank. Yeah. And that was, that was my first one I ever killed. Yeah. That was in our fall wild edibles yeah. hunting canoe trip video. Last year. Yeah. The year before. Yeah. Yeah, it's a while ago now. It was a while ago. So many adventures ago. Oh, this cute little stove. Lots of dry cedar here. Get some of the fine dry twigs from the ends. And some bigger twigs. Some of these that have already been knocked down. Here's my cedar bark starter. I squished it pretty hard in my hand. It needs to be fluffed back up a bit. Put that in here. And then we'll make a nest of these small twigs. I don't know if this cabin's got a box of matches or anything nearby, but got a lighter in my pocket. That bark might have been a little bit too wet, I thought. Hmm, I might cheat on this one. Pass me that roll of toilet paper. Well, 
This might be greasy. Oh yeah, all right. Well, that's a big piece. We can put some grease in. Yeah, or those um, pieces between the cutting boards. Those probably have a little bit of oil on them. This one should go. nice there's so much cedar around you always have good fire starter good deer deer brows um, get that draft in the chimney is there is that a damper control on that yeah um so you want that open and then it's pretty odd if it's, if it's open. How does this what's this other white handled one for? That's the that's the damper. Oh, my lighter might be on its last legs. Oh, there we go. Thanks. So what have we got here? This is the goose that we're going to warm up. Brought some dried wild leeks. We've got walnuts. We've got bear fat. We've got maple sugar. We've got wadobo spice for Chris. Maple syrup. We have a spice mix that I made with yarrow and sedge and a little bit of salt and something else. I brought more dried yarrow for spice. And I brought a tea mix for when we boil up some water. And it's got goldenrod, yarrow, rose hips, hawberries, Labrador tea. Uh, that might be everything in there. What's in the meat pile over here? In the meat pile? Well, it's not camp until you have <laughs> fur on rabbit. Fur on rabbit. That's it. Is that a snowshoe the here? It's a snowshoe. It's the one we shot. Okay. Remember the uh, the trip we went to way up north? Yeah. That's it. It's oh. still brown, right? Yeah. Remember that was the early it's early season, but it snowed. Yeah, yeah. So oh that, yeah. That's the one I never we, got to. We got caught in that blizzard. <laughs> yeah. This one ended up in the bottom of the freezer. So anyway. Oh yeah. It's, it's gonna been get, a long time waiting. It's gonna get used in the stew today, I think. Nice. So that's one. Get rid of this one here. The bottom end's not that pretty. Uh, 
a snowshoe here, so that's one already clean. Yeah. Uh, bear call fat. Nice. Yeah, from the fall. Okay, to wrap and up those lean meats. And you wanted to try a squirrel, so. Yeah. There's two. Awesome. I think there's two. Yeah, two. Looks like it. Yeah. So, and we'll ho hopefully we'll add a cottontail. Yeah. Or two. Yeah, crows. Because they're all, <laughs> maybe. See the crows are smarter than the cottontail. Yeah. There's lots of cottontail around, so. Right on. We have a good chance. Okay. It's kind of crisp, crisped up okay, eh? Yeah, that's really good actually. We should put some bear fat on there while we have a chance. Yeah, just on top. Yeah, that's exactly how I did my roast the other day. It's going to be the secret ingredient. One of them. Yeah. It's the bear fat. We can hear the fire. Is it also the juices heating up? Yeah, no, back here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's just starting to. Nice. The dollop of bear fat. Yeah. Like the goose is pretty fatty as it is, but well, look at look at the drippings down there. Yeah. Should have brought a little uh, turkey baster or something. Yeah. Now you're talking. We need a bushcraft turkey baster. <laughs> Your bear fat's really sticky. Is it stickier than your bear fat? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe because mine's always in the fridge. Although this one's pretty cool too. That looks pretty good. We'll just throw the tin foil on top there. And we'll let that melt and baste and all that good stuff. We'll figure out how to scoop some of that down there and put it up top, I think. Yeah, we have a spoon. The kid. Good. Want some of this back meat off first? That looks pretty good. Does it ever? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that looks pretty tasty. I'm gonna talk more about these. Uh, cutting boards in a second They're a gift from a friend mutual friend yep and he's done a really awesome job at them too let's look dude i think i 
probably will just flip over and uh, get the breast meat out. Yeah. Is this oh, it's at the back. That's the back. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's what. Just a little bit tricky. Sure. It's almost like I feel like taking that rack out, just soaking it in the grease too. Want to do that? Mm. No. Yeah, I'm not sure. Too hot. We can spoon it over after. Maybe I'll take the rack out so it's easy to spoon out. I'm just thinking letting it sit and then soaking in it. So this fits in perfectly with our wild theme because obviously, and it's from, from the area here too. Local goose. Local goose. And there's a ton of fat in it. Like it's all dripped down in the, into the tray. My mouth is watering. But this is, you would eat something like this for uh, breakfast? I don't really eat breakfast very often. No. Um, if I eat breakfast, it is sometimes just like a leftover stew or soup or something. Yeah. You can throw mine right in the grease for now. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, the skin is really nice on this. Yeah, it's very fatty because it's late late season goose. Mm -hmm. So fatten up quite a bit for the winter or for us. It's tasty. Let's put some of this grease out to go with it. I'm going to do mine a little bit less elegantly. I'm just going to soak it. Oh. Splashy hot grease. I'm just gonna yeah. soak it in there. I think that's the best way to get the most value. Cut it up a little bit. Let it uh, all that juice get back into the meat. <laughs> I don't. I don't try to do that. Put the there we go. Beauty. And then we have to go with it some black walnuts. These are obviously pre-shelled. Uh, a couple years ago we did that. So that's going to be on the side, I think. It'll work? Yep. Yeah. So on the side. Like that. And the rest you have is mostly spices, right? So. Yeah. So, so far we have smell that and see if it's that smells good yeah yeah it's just the yarrow and the toasted sedge yeah i don't know maybe just sprinkle a little bit more of this we did put some on earlier but nice. oh that's a low chair <laughs> you guys that too <laughs> I have a coffee. <laughs> you have a coffee? Nice. Kevin's here. Woo. We got the whole the whole crew now. Have a seat. Did you bring fork? No. <laughs> you brought two, didn't you? I don't think so. I thought you threw two in that bowl. I haven't seen another one. Oh. Maybe just one then. Want some goose? <laughs> All a little piece. Yep. It's going back over here. Yeah. It's like sticks in it. Yeah. So what is that? Uh, toasted sedge seeds, because that really brings out their flavor. Sedge, sedge of weed? It's a, uh, yeah, like a water plant. It grows in wet areas. And then there's, um, what does it smell like? Yarrow. It smells like a bale of hay a little bit. Actually, <laughs> that's what it smells like. It smells like a good bale of hay, though. Yeah. 
Excited. Yeah, that's kind of kind of heavy all your smell and then you wish you were a cow. Okay. Okay, sit down cool so I can film this shit. One of you two. Which cameras do? Jeremy Jeremy's just rolling. Yeah. He's got a good computer. Oh, there's that. hair in it. Oh, it's fur. So I cut you two pieces and they're just kind of on the edge there. Alright. Okay, so Jeremy's got spice here. And we're trying to figure out what it smells like. You know my wadobo smells like. So that smells good. Smells like I don't know. Tropical. Yeah. Right? Cajun y Cajun y a little bit? Mm-hmm. So this is what do you say is sedge? Yarrow? Anything else? I think a little bit of salt. You put salt in there too? Is that a cheat? It's salt I made. You made from the salt. ocean. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. And I didn't know you had salt. I, I made it when I was in Grenada. I just have like two handfuls and we're using it very sparingly. What? You Last year you made it? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going back there. Mm -hmm. So you're hoping to bring salt back? Will A couple of kilograms, yeah. Will, will they let you? I yeah. guess so, right? Just go to do for that. Just salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's actually, you got your sugar? This smells good. You put on... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, have maple sugar. Is that your maple sugar? My maple sugar. This is my maple sugar? Where's maple sugar? Okay. <laughs> my maple sugar. Well, okay, my trees. Anyway, <laughs> so the sedge, we figure it smells like a bale of hay, but, it, but in a good way. Yeah. I, I don't I don't mind the smell of it. I the, it the sedge, when you toast it, it smells like popcorn. You smell that? Yeah, it doesn't smell bad. And the yarrow smells... Very mm -hmm. planty. And the, the walnuts, w what would you say the walnuts taste, smell like? Walnuts. <laughs> they don't, they don't though. Like store walnuts? They, they, no, they don't. In Sam Thayer's book, he says, well, you can't smell very can well. No, not top notch, but so Sam like walnuts. Sam Thayer says they smell, he said, his, his buddy said they smelled like paint. They do sometimes smell like paint thinner. Paint thinner, like yeah. Like acrylic layer, like a uh, oil-based paint. That's a black walnut. It's not good. It's a, it's a, it's not good. <laughs> it's a wild, wild walnut. <laughs> so we got a goose, walnut. So that walnut would be our fat and fat protein, a little bit of carbs. Mm -hmm. So we need more carbs. So that's where the sugar's gonna come in. Maple. Yeah, a little bit of carbs in the spice. Maple syrup. Good amount. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Protein and fat in the goose. Now we got a lot in there. Oops, too much maple syrup. Mm. No, said nobody ever. Hmm. So that's gonna round it out. Oh, that's good. You got a tea going, or is that still sugar? It's just sugar water. So you've got some other stuff for tea. Mm -hmm. All right. How's the goose? If it's dry, dunk it back in there. Oh, I was. It was dunked. Dunk it. You didn't bring any plates or anything for yourself. Kevin's drinking regular coffee, by the way. From a really, really short chair, and Jeremy also has a very short chair. In case you're wondering what's going on there. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. Very good. It's okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna edit your brother out of my video. <laughs> <laughs> actually. No, that's actually really good. I've only been eating wild food for 60 days, so mm. everything tastes pretty good. It's all relative. Mm -hmm. It kind of tastes like roast beef, actually. Mm -hmm. I feel like roast beef. Roast beef and duck. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of that ducky flavor. I can only compare it to roast beef because that's all I've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I find it tastes a little bit like pork too. You know when sometimes you can taste pork in the back of your nose? Mm -hmm. I get a bit of that off the goose. Here. Need some sugar? More sugar to my very, very strong coffee. The, um, the walnuts are definitely a strong flavor. Yeah, they are a lot pretty strong. A lot stronger than like a domestic variety of walnut but they're they're good apparently they're good baked they asked jeremy to bring up um 
some flowers so we could try to do some baking because he's been experimenting with different mm -hmm. seeds to make uh, breads. Mm -hmm. So I was curious to see what they were like, if they were anything like a modern bread. They're probably pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And they're been, like pancakes usually. And you've been using uh, fish eggs as a binder, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. It's like perch eggs. Mm -hmm. Have you been blending them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting the blender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just whip them with a fork. Yeah. And then you mix that in the bread and it will help hold it together. Yeah. Interesting. Sometimes a bit of applesauce too. Yeah. Delphine's better at it than I am. If Delphine's um, Jeremy's girlfriend and she's also doing the big, the big wild year, so only eating wild food for yeah. a whole year. Mm -hmm. That's a little better. Yep. Yeah. It was good. You're supposed to eat the outside. Yeah, it's the skin. That's the best part. Mm. If you don't eat it, Jeremy will eat it. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Jeremy's looking at me going, why are you eating my food? <laughs> <laughs> why are you throwing me the skin? Oh, we got lots of food. Mm -hmm. Still got squirrel, hare, whole thing. Yeah, this is a wild food weekend feast. Yeah, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to my uh, roots of the Wilderness Living Challenge yeah. a little bit. and I will only be eating wild food this weekend. So. And wadobo spice. And wadobo. Maybe some wadobo. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not. I'll try to. I'll try not to. All right. I think this is flavored really well. With, I like it. Like the maple syrup on meat is 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 it just rounds it out. That's your yeah. problem. You don't have any syrup on your meat. Nothing wrong with it. You don't have a plate. Nothing wrong with it. Now it's good. I didn't say it was bad to start with. Where'd you get this bed sheet? <laughs> <laughs> it's a drop sheet. It's about it's about right for the level of finishness of the cabin. Mm. <laughs> it's got like it's got like a six hundred thread count or something. It's, <laughs> it's a pretty nice bed sheet. Drop sheet. It's actually got enough sugar in it now. It's not going to be easy, or it's not going to. It's not going to be hard for us to maintain our weight this weekend because <laughs> we're not doing, we're not going to be burning a lot of calories. We're not going to be building anything. We're not going to be running around too much. We're going to set some traps later for um, cottontail. Walk around, see what we can find. If we can find a crow, we'll take a crow. There's not a whole lot open right now. There's coyote. Fox is open year round. Mm -hmm. yeah, not really very good game species for eating. It's not likely that you'll see one either, right? No. And as far as like eating wild foods, this is like the time when you're kind of re relying on things that you have stored. So Jeremy will be in high gear come spring. He'll be out there yeah. trying to find everything. You know, mm -hmm. wild leeks is going to be huge for you, right? Leeks, fiddleheads, smelt run, sucker run. Yeah. And then all the fishing seasons that open in May, all the other spring ephemerals, the trout lilies. Yeah. Cattail shoots, then the cattail pollen, and then strawberries, and then just on and on through the summer. Everything's got its week. There's lots of fiddleheads here. Hack another piece off. Eh. <laughs> He's well fed. <laughs> How does this meal rank? Did you put syrup on it yet? On the, I put some on my walnuts and it's kind of running over into the meat. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I put syrup on a lot of my meat. Going for seconds. Throw that fat back in the, in the grease in the bottom and then it'll improve itself. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Whose goose is this? Who brought this goose? I did. Shot it. Oh. Poof. Yeah. It's too much work. Mark up. No, it's not. <laughs> you just have to be more selective where you pick. They're yeah. not laid out the same as a chicken, so they're here to cut up. Yeah. I'm gonna follow the bone line. I have chicken. Mm -hmm. That, in theory, was it's it was raised in my yard. Mm -hmm. So it's not wild that, though. Does that qualify? No. This is not non-agricultural. It was kind of wild. Nope. Domestic. Free range? 
Yeah. Ish. They were in that little house I built. And then you let them all go and you hunted them in your woods? <laughs> <laughs> no, they went into like a government certified butcher. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was something. We're going to get meat birds this year. Right. And then eat them next year. Yeah. Or feed them to the kids this year. Maybe a hundred. A yep. hundred? Probably do a little bit of it on my channel. That'll be a lot. Uh, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. We did 50. Mm -hmm. 14 pound birds by the end of, uh, yeah. start at August. We did it May 2-4 until like chicks at May 2-4 and by first week of August they were 14 pounds. We're going to get them at the end of July, start of August, and then butcher them in October when it's cold out. Mm -hmm. The only problem with that that I was told that is that if they get too big too quick and it gets really hot, they have heart attacks. Yeah. It won't be hot in North Bay though. No. Well, this year, mine are outside, so it's not like they're getting overheated in their coop, which is the bigger problem. Yeah. But outside, and they have a really shady pattern. Well, I don't know. I think Chris he shot video. They they just got towed around the field, right? So oh, you had a chicken chicken tractor. Chicken, chicken tractor. Nice. Yeah. All right, we're gonna finish up eating, and we're gonna go set some tracks. See if we can set some. All right guys, we're gonna finish eating and then we're gonna go set some traps for some uh, cottontails, see if we can find. Make faces. Sounds good. Nice. I said I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. Can you turn my camera off too? Yeah. Are they the same camera? <coughs> Similar. Camera one, camera one. Yours looks smaller, slightly smaller. Like it's the model, previous. Mm -hmm. Mine's the 33. So now that we've eaten up that goose, I'm going to go out and have the uh, hair here. So I'm just going to do a quick job, skin that, gut it, and then that is going to go into our next meal's stew. What are we doing? Hair and squirrel? Hair, squirrel. And then we're thinking about what to do with that goose, if I'm going to do a soup stock with it, or we might get some meat off of it and add it to the stew as well. So that's what we're up to. I hear crows. There's crows all the time. Yeah. They never land though. <laughs> they don't have to. They just have to come close. So I'm really excited to introduce a channel sponsor that is new for me um, and that is airgunsource.ca, an Ontario company that's um, importing and distributing some really fantastic PCP and other air rifle products. Um, so they set me up with a, an air gunning kit. This is the Edgun Leshy. This is a PCP rifle that I've had my eye on for a really long time um, and I couldn't really find anybody who was importing it in Canada. It does have a longer barrel shroud to um, make it Canadian legal so it does fold up to be a very small light short gun and what attracted me to this is that it would be the perfect foraging firearm. It's not really a firearm. The perfect foraging uh, air rifle to slip into a backpack and then I can opportunistically hunt um, while I'm collecting without lugging around like a long bulky rifle. Um, one thing I've noticed for sure is if I've got a rifle on a cross sling and I'm crouching a lot to pick and gather, um, it doesn't fit very well, but this can just go in a backpack. It also has a D-clip on the stock so you can just hook it off of a backpack and you can carry it on your side or on your back and then just unclip it as you need it and it's ready to go. So if you don't know anything about PCP, precharged pneumatic, um, basically what you've got is a, some kind of a compressed air system that's fueling your shots and in this case it's in the foldable stock. You load it from the back here so the gun cannot operate when it's in the folded position. It can only fire when it's been opened and your air canister is now connected to the barrel. Um, so my kit that Air Gun Source put together for me uh, includes the manual pump. So I can take this pump anywhere on a canoe trip, on a backpacking trip, on a hunting trip, and I can keep this pumped up. It goes to 300 bar, I believe. Um, and it's got a little digital 
readout on the back so you can cycle through the options and it'll tell you um, how much bar it's been using per shot, um, how much pressure is left and how many shots you can expect to get out of this PCP. I did also pick up um, a BT bipod, um, Atlas Precision Bipods. So this nice bipod on the, on the bottom, which they said is a very high quality um, bipod. It's very adjustable, it's very light, it's made of aluminum. And this is a bipod that I'll be able to switch over to, say for example, my moose rifle or a deer rifle. Um, if I'm going on a hunt where I think that I can use a bipod on that kind of a rifle as well. Or I can set up for some steady shots, especially removing nuisance animals, which is one thing that I'll expect to do a lot of with this PCP rifle uh, in this upcoming year. So it is my big wild year, 365 days of wild food eating, and I'm always on the lookout for food to put in my freezer. I have these JBS pellets, just some round nose ones for target hunting. And I have some of these precision poly mags for hunting with. This Edgun Leshy comes in a couple of different calibers and I did get the 25 caliber version, although uh, apparently it's easy to remove the barrels and you can rebarrel them in the other calibers uh, very quickly if you want to have the versatility of being able to shoot 22 or 177 caliber. Um, with the 25 caliber pellets, they weigh about 26 grains and they're running about 900 feet per second. So this is not an air rifle that you would shoot in your garage like I would with my other breaking barrel air rifle. Um, this is going to break glass, punch holes through metal siding. Um, this is something to be much more careful with. So I'm super excited uh, about my um, channel support from airgunsource.ca. I'm gonna link them below. If you are in Canada um, and are looking for something in air rifles, they've got it all. They're super friendly and helped me to put together this package. Um, really great guys to work with and I'm really looking forward to putting this to use. I have not shot it yet, um, but I think that Chris and I are gonna do some plinking and then once we're uh, a little bit assured of our accuracy, we're going to try for some critters today. So we're already putting these cutting boards to good use. Check them out. Maple one over here. Black walnut over here. These were made by our friend Adam Craig. On YouTube he's Adam Craig Outdoors. You've seen him on our channels before. Um, and if you want to see some of his product you can pop over to inthestickswoodworking.com or contact him at inthestickswoodworking at gmail.com. So he's putting together some really nice woodworking projects and I'm not sure if he's just shipping to Canada or if he ships also to the United States but if you're curious you can just pop him a question by email and you're going to see these two cutting boards getting put to good use through this weekend. Alright so these are the 25 caliber pellets and they're 25.4 grains. These are not, not your regular Pelican pellet. They're heavy. They're that bigger diameter. Feel that. Pass one over to Kevin. Pass one over to Chris. They've, they've definitely got some heft to them. So we'll take some out and we'll see if we have any luck. so different from back home where there's like literally more than three feet of snow and you have to have snowshoes to go anywhere in the bush and here you can just walk in your boots there's not that much snow apple for bait 
and this is the leftover slab pile from construction of the off-grid cabin and there are cottontail rabbits hiding in here so hopefully this catches us a few rabbits yeah you want christmas lights no like clear ones no maybe i don't know just, just one one pigtail will do it so we're just talking about lighting because we it's going to get dark soon and there aren't lights set up here except we have a couple of flashlights so and my camera fogged up you can still see me right get the window out of the background so we um uh, took apart the goose and we took apart all the stew over here so that's simmering away we have our couple of traps set we're gonna go set one more and then we'll see what the evening brings last trap it's the big one big one for that nuisance raccoons <laughs> there was a when my brother had chickens up at the house there was always raccoons up there oh yeah all the time and they they like i told him he's got to get rid of the feed but they knocked the feed around the edge of the cages and the raccoons walk the perimeter because they oh, get yeah. easy feed yeah but if they find a way to breach the fence they get in there and catch a chicken yeah and then they catch one chicken they're going to come back and catch all of them for sure so you got to keep on top of the raccoons all the time and there's yeah. like you can never get rid of all of them yeah there's literally like along this creek system hundreds that will use it every yeah. year if not more you never get rid of them Flatten out a spot for the trap. Yeah. This is a pretty big one, eh? <laughs> yeah. What do they advertise it for? Uh, I think they say it's for like large catch. Like they, I think they have coyote on it, but I don't think a coyote would go in the size. It's pretty big, but it's not that big. Yeah. Like I think they're saying like domestic dogs and cats and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Like if you wanted to. And some big raccoons, like when they get fat in the fall. Oh yeah. Like they would be hard pressed to fit in some of those other traps. Well they get like 40 pounds, right? Yeah. 40 pounds would about round out that trap. Yeah. <laughs> so all your traps have a different mechanism, but they're all pretty similar. Yeah. That one just, uh, once they... it steps on the foot pedal, the back. Yeah. And then that drops down and... That yeah. walks in. It's simple. These are the, some of the most effective traps in the world. Yeah. <laughs> really? They're just not very space efficient. <laughs> no. Like, you don't fold up like a foothold or whatever. Yeah. But, like, you can keep an animal alive in here for a week. Yeah. If you want to do that in the summer, this is the way to go. Nothing can steal your, your yeah. catch. Because once it's in there, it's safe. Yeah. It's not going to rot. It's not going to spoil. No animal can come in there and grab it. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it'll stay alive. Yeah. So it's a good deal. Hey. Go ahead. So for bait, we got a, a turkey leg. <laughs> it's a, oh. road, a roadkill turkey. Yeah. Um, but it's it's way too far gone. It reeks. Yeah. So we'll use that for stink bait. Um, for raccoon, if we can, and then we're gonna throw some apples in there too. Yeah. It's good that it's leaking. Yeah. I'm actually going to drag it around a bit. The bag? Oh. Or the leg? <laughs> on my leg? The turkey leg, oh. not your leg. <laughs> There's some on, on my, your leg too, I think. might be on my leg. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't smell as bad as it did before. Because no. it's cooling off, I think. Yeah, if we drag it around here, we'll make a scent trail. So if anything comes in the vicinity here, it'll yeah. walk right into the trap. And that's all it takes. A couple of apples. Squish them up for some scent. 
Rebound. <laughs> Legs holding it down. Yeah. Yep. So those are the three first shots I took with the Leshy and then one that Chris took. It's like a, I don't know, a one and a half inch offhand group. I haven't even dialed in the scope yet. So that's pretty good. And um, I didn't really mention the scope on this yet, but it's currently fitted with a Spectrum um, scope. CP Spectrum. Center point. It's got a nice crisp, crisp view. I don't know if I can line the camera up in such a way that you can see through it, but anyway, works good for my eyeball. Quite a bit of loft space. Nice window on the north end and a nice round one on the south end. And it's quite a bit warmer up here, so it's tempting to uh, tempting to sleep on the top, even though you have to climb the ladder every time. So before it gets too dark, we're going to have a bite of supper. So this is the squirrel and the rabbit. And it's been simmering in here since this morning. I noticed if you scoop from the bottom of the pot, you come up with a lot of boneless meat. So I'm scooping. And we're going to go sit outside. So I'm actually going to do a chat on Chris's channel. Um, some updates from the Big Wild Year. Um, so if you're interested in some of those updates, you should pop over to his channel. and I'm Trying to get a scoop. Catch the video there. Oh, oh you want a scoop? <laughs> you, you mentioned boneless meat. I'll take oh, it. Oh, <laughs> okay. I thought you were just showing off your. No. Trying to get some. I don't have a, a spoon, so. <laughs> get to the bottom. No. See, I might have got a lot of the pieces. Let me try this side here. Oh, well, there's a nice leg there, but. Just some of the juice is good too. Yeah. The stew juice. Try to cut you off. That's all right. I wanted some juice. I just was sending people to your channel. Oh, sure. To have a look at our chat because we're not going to double film it. That would be a little bit silly. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. And then that might be it for me tonight, unless we get out and um, check those traps just after dark. So I might have an update or we might pick up from here in the morning. Good morning. I'm up in the, the peak of the small cabin, which is, uh, it's pretty roomy up here. I can stand up in the middle, not, not so much off to the sides and have my bed set up over on this, uh, side here so these are um, Chris has got a couple of these cots the how do you pronounce them Teton Sports <laughs> Teton Teton they're Sports not, they're not actually French dude yeah okay they're Tetons <laughs> yeah in French a Teton is something else you can you can google translate it if you're really curious it's nothing bad it's just funny <laughs> I'm sure I could just tell you right now and not get myself in trouble. It's like the French word for boobies. <laughs> um, so uh, there's there's the sleeping spot, and what's pretty awesome up here is there's this circular glass window that kind of looks out outside. That's pretty sweet. 
and we hauled the battery and the inverter up here last night so that the bulb just hung down below and then we didn't have to trip on the cord so it's pretty convenient you can just flip the flip the on switch on this little inverter and away you go I love this kind of a setup for cabin power too like all you need is a, a battery uh, these little inverters and then you can connect a solar panel charger onto this battery if you have enough sun to hang a solar panel um, and you can get all the light you'd ever need out of out of your battery especially if it just charges for most of the week and then if you're just here on a weekend or a day of the week so the, the day is broken so we're gonna go out we're gonna check those traps um, and see what we have got to add to our stew the stew has been on the stove all night eh Chris yep. yeah so it's just been like simmering away it should be super tender today um, and uh, we'll go check traps and then we'll have a, a breakfast meal and then uh, we'll update on what our plans are for the rest of the day here we go what do we get we got one one big fat cottontail this is yeah. one of the biggest cottontails i've seen yeah it's almost as big as a snowshoe hare it is really yeah it's a well-fed well-kept uh cottontail yeah right on so, good so work. we're one for two right because we have two traps to check yeah yeah so my goal was to get two out yeah. of four so we're halfway there yeah nice yeah so, so we'll that'll be for your big wild year right sure yeah that's all yours yeah. okay take it with you all right i don't know if i've eaten a cottontail rabbit before that might be a first it'll be a first so i've been tracking species that we've collected and eaten for the big wild year so this will be a new one that'll go under my mammals tab and it'll count as a new species overall we're up over 70 species that we've collected um that are edible for the big wild year did you add squirrel yet uh not black squirrel so i'll have to add that now there you go so i didn't collect it but i ate one with chris yesterday obviously so yeah that'll be good i was going to add so on your channel you were talking about sustainable use of the resource yeah. and how like catching one rabbit out just kind of frees up space for another rabbit yeah and so a story that i have is um a guy that my dad knows he had red squirrels in his bird feeders all the time and he didn't like them and he shot 168 red squirrels in a year obviously he does not have 168 red squirrels that live on his property um, but because of inequity of habitat what happens is his property is a high quality habitat because it's got a house to go sleep in because the squirrels probably get into the house in the shed and it's got bird seed yeah. and there are always squirrels waiting to move into those good habitats um, and so when you remove an animal from a good habitat a, an animal in a marginal habitat is always waiting in the wings to move into that space and so that's one way that you know if you're in a good habitat is if you're consistently removing animals I guess and they consistently repopulate that's you're in good habitat for that animal yeah um, but if you remove animals and then they aren't there anymore um, it's probably a low quality habitat and then it's a catch-22 like if you or the species in, is in danger yeah in which case you shouldn't be hunting them anyway that's right so yeah it's a good indicator if you if you if you take an animal out and it's <coughs> and yeah. our management system is in place that we don't have to worry about things like that yeah there you know we have we know how many roughly how many how many individuals of each species are there yeah so if we have an open season for it in Canada it's probably managed correctly yeah and we have <clears throat> uh, measures in place where we reduce seasons or um, or eliminate seasons altogether yeah. when the species de declines yeah so yeah and look as an example we have um, the what's it called the lake sturgeon is that the species name yeah so lake sturgeons are uh, a big prehistoric fish that we have in our lakes and rivers and traditionally they were very abundant and in North Bay the story is they used to catch them and then use them as because they're very oily they would use them as fuel in the logging tugboats um, but they have been on a huge decline and, and population biologists know that because they track them and and now they've closed the season on them so you can no longer catch and keep sturgeon yeah and but by example they're, they're abundant in, in other p regions yes in North America and there's yeah. open seasons for them yeah so it's just our habitat's probably marginal or else we, we over, over aggressively yeah. harvested them at one point in time yeah so now we're letting them recover yeah but 
Yeah. Yeah, I think there are way more hunting and fishing rules than most people realize unless they're a hunter or a fisherman. <laughs> yeah, no, and then it gets really complicated. Yeah. Because you're trying to figure out what season's which and when it, when's it open yeah. and what's your catch limit and what's, and then there's wildlife management units. It's yeah. a whole very intricate uh, method of managing yeah. uh, uh, limitless resource that can be limited. <laughs> yes. Depending yeah. on mismanagement. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. There's one in there. Yeah. Right on, we're two for three. So nothing here today. Chris was saying this low wet area is like a real good travel way for raccoons heading into cornfields. Um, and that in the summer there's an abundance of them. And you said they get in after your brother's chickens, eh, from time to time? All the time. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably a good spot for hunting them in the hunting season or removing nuisance raccoons in the chicken season. So, all right, we had some success. Yeah. We'll head back to the cabin and uh, now the work begins. And the meal. Hey, so this has been on the stove all night, all morning. And that, I don't think it could get any more tender, right? That's not going to be chewy. It shouldn't be. <laughs> Might need a little bit more salt in there, but yeah, I think the salt will help break it up. You could, you could throw some wadobo on yours. I could. Is that considered cheating for this weekend? Uh, well, I'm not going to have any, so it's not <laughs> cheating for me. It's just depending on what your rules are. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at all that meat. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it. Do you, you probably want to use this spoon so you can scoop some of that from the bottom? No, I'm going to take the whole thing over. Oh, I see what's going on. Pretty good. Very okay. good. You can see Chris is all set up here for a breakfast chat, so we'll probably do some yakking about the weekend on his channel. If you just pop over there, you can check out his video. I don't think there's any sense in us duplicating our content and having two cameras running at the same time, so I'm going to turn mine off. So, we've mostly been cooking for uh, quite a bit of this morning, I guess, eh? And our finale for the weekend was raccoon burgers. So uh, there's quite a bit of detail about these on Chris's channel, the Wooded Beardsman, obviously. And if you want to see a little bit more about that, you should pop over there. Um, what we did is we ground up some raccoon, added some wild spice that I brought from home and some maple syrup and cook those up. I think we both agree that they're fantastic and that might be one of the best ways to cook raccoon. Although on my channel you've also seen me cook it a few other ways that I really really like. And um, we'll soon be wrapping up our adventure here. We're just now kind of packing things away and I'll make the long journey home. Um, but uh, Stay tuned for more adventures. Chris is coming up north. I'll be back down south. We'll be getting into some more adventures soon. And uh, through the big wild year, of course, I'm posting lots of wild updates about foraging, hunting, fishing, and eating nothing but wild food for 365 days.